Hey everyone, it's Nitej here. Today I will show you a variety of things that you can do by using the use effect hook and you will see how versatile this hook is when reacting to side effects in the react components. So let's get started. The first use case that I will talk about is for fetching data. So you can use use effect to fetch data from an API when the component mounts or when certain values change you can control when this use effect callback is going to be called by controlling what is there in this dependency array it ensures that your component has the data it needs when it renders or when some values change in this example we are just calling the async fetch data function when the data is received then we can simply set any state variable with the fetched data the second use case for use effect is to set up subscriptions and event listeners such as WebSocket connections or window resize events. All of these things can be managed within use effect. For example, if you want to attach an event listener to the windows resize event, then you can do that within use effect. And then when the component unmounts, then you can simply return a cleanup function to remove the event listener to prevent any kind of data or memory leaks. Third use case is fairly straightforward but it's pretty useful and that is to update the document title. Use effect can be used to perform any side effect like updating the document title in response to a component rendering or its state changing. So for example, we can update the document's title either when the component mounts or renders for the first time or when any other dependencies change by specifying them in the use effect hooks dependency array next one is applying debouncing or throttling by using the use effect hook so implementing debounce or throttle logic in use effect can optimize the performance for operations like real-time search or window resizing which needs to be done when any input state changes so for example over here use effect can handle the debounce logic by simply using a timer and then clearing the timer when the component unmounts by returning a cleanup function with the clear timeout execution of the timeout reference. Use effect can also be used to perform animations when any of the state values change. So for example to manage animations that need to be synchronized with the state or props of your component when there is any change occurring to them then we can do that by using the use effect hook because the use effect callback will simply trigger when any of the dependencies will change giving the user a feeling that the animations are occurring after they have performed any action on the user interface next use case of use effect hook is integration with third-party libraries if you are using third-party libraries that need to be initialized and potentially cleaned up as well then use effect is a good place to handle that Next use case is persisting state to local storage. So use effect can be used to watch for changes in the state and persist those changes to local storage or any other form of persistent storage. This is particularly helpful when we want to prevent any kind of data loss of users whenever there is some kind of network failures. The last use case that I will talk about for this video is logging. So use effect can be used for logging component renders or state changes and it is very helpful for debugging purposes when you just want to track the state or prop changes within the life cycle of a component. So these examples showcase the versatility of use effect in handling a wide range of functionalities in react functional components from managing side effects, synchronizing with external data or to handle cleanup logic. I hope these examples gave you a clear understanding of how versatile use effect is and how you can use it in your projects. If you found this video helpful then please consider subscribing. It really supports me in creating more content like this. Thanks for watching and I will see you in the next one.